League of Legends. A playtime video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to another Lam and Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Leander, developed by Traveller's Tales and published by Signosis in 1991. To begin, we are given a loading picture and some great music as well, and the story behind this game, we play as a character known as Leander, and it's our job to rescue the Princess Lusana, and she has been abducted by the evil Thanatos. And Thanatos is supposed to be a Greek god, but he reminds me more of a Greek island. And the title music sounds like it was ripped off from some place as well. Press fire and check out this game itself. Leander begins with this introduction sequence and as you can see it was programmed by John Burton and the graphics were by Andrew Ingram and you'll be hearing a little bit more about those guys later on. For the moment we can see that some time and expertise has been spent on the introduction and it's a very flashy introduction in the arcade style where we get to see our character who's dressed up in the Greek style because yes this game is based in Greece and all these gods and all the items are supposed to be based on Greek legends. But that isn't apparent unless you read the introduction, which is actually printed in the manual, and it's a big long story to read through. In the meantime, we gain some excellent music. the game begins we can select a number of options including our maximum lives and also the difficulty level and we can also enter a password on the screen as well. Unfortunately there are three worlds in the game so you'll only gain those three passwords. Well actually two because the world one certainly does not require a password and we can choose music or sound effects and the difficulty level we can choose training which only gives us access to world one or normal which gives us access to the whole game. Before every level we are given an introduction and you can see that our friendly princess has given us the way to go. All we have to do is to collect the teleport key and travel to the teleport to exit that level. And that is the format to complete every single level in this game. The 
Commander is a platform game, and if you collide with those enemies or get touched with the spikes that they wield, and they don't fire any weapons of course because this is ancient Greece, then you will take damage. And we've already taken one hit already, which has changed the colour of our armour. We've taken another hit, so that means the armour goes purple, and if we take another hit after this, unfortunately we'll die, and we will lose one of the five lives that we chose to begin this game with. You can see that we're armed with a basic sword, and we can extend that sword a little bit later on, and we can buy extra weapons, and you can see that we have five bombs at the moment. No idea how to use those, but I never use those anyway. And the thing at the bottom of the screen is for a suicide weapon, which, yes, we can destroy everything on the screen if we commit suicide, and that's particularly useless unless you have a million lives in the bank, of which I think you can only have nine at the maximum. So if you hold down the fire, button that thing at the bottom of the screen will light up and we will die and there is absolutely no point to that weapon and so that thing at the bottom is absolutely useless. Like all the greatest platformers, we can find hidden areas and bonus items, and you can see that I've collected another flask of energy which has transformed our shield, and the shield armour in this case is very representative of our health, and it saves us glaring all over that screen just to find out how healthy we are. We find a hidden cave in this section, and in this cave we'll also find some great effects and some bats as well, and we'll also hopefully find the key to the exit of this level. Having collected the key, then the exit door will flash under the lives, and that means that we have an unlimited amount of time to get to the exit, and we don't have to rush against the time limit like the very worst platformers, but it means we can milk these levels forever, and the enemies do respawn, and perhaps we can milk some money out of these guys, which will come in handy when we find the shops a bit later on. For now, we are gathering some coins, and we are moving towards the exit, and some of the bonuses are very difficult to get, and I definitely recommend not jumping onto spikes and losing a life on the first level. Bonus flask has given us extra powerful armor, and the silver white you can see is worth three extra hit points. We are given blue armor at the beginning of every lost life, and that is worth two hit points, which means we can be hit twice before we die. When we lose that, we'll go down to the green, and then finally the purple. The silver one is worth three hit points, the gold is worth four, and finally the black armor, if we should find that, is worth five extra hit points. So if we find the black, that's absolutely fantastic. But here we are on level 1.2 of the seven levels that are on world one. And from the very start, it gives us the opportunity to spend that cash. shop we can find some items and yes these bombs we are given at the start and we can also upgrade our armor as well you can see that is black and that is very nice and that is the gold armor which gives us four hit points going back to the silver and all the way back there we can collect any amount of armor that we can afford and we can also collect any of the weapons as well from the humble daggers to the short sword which is worth 500 gold coins and 
one, yes, I think I'll buy that because that's money well spent and that's just about everything that we can afford in this shop. The long sword is worth it, and also the daggers as well, fire head, so that we do have some kind of a short ranged attack. And you can see these graphics certainly remind me of any number of Cygnosis games. And of course, Cygnosis were absolutely on the money when it came to graphics on the Amiga, and all of these games look pretty much like this. If you look at Orc and Shadow of the Beast, you will find the hills in the background, and you'll also find some great animated characters. In this case, we find a horse with an animated bell above that, and the animations and the characters and the graphics in this game are certainly 100% top notch. In this case, I'm choosing to use that as a platform, and all we need to do is to find the cave again, and then find the item which will allow us to leave. Point, I have no idea why I'm leaving that chest behind, but I do know that the black armor, as well as the cave entrance, is in this direction, so if I play my cards right, I should have the full armor going into the cave section, and that's particularly great since we've lost one life early already. theme which runs through every single level and as there are seven levels to go through it means we will have to hear this tune over again but it is a very relaxing melody and it means that the player doesn't have to rush through the game and it doesn't create hypertension either so it really is a great theme and it reminds players of the game every time they hear it. cave we've managed to find a one up and that puts us up to five lives but that is not the exit to the level and if you read the introduction it said that we must find a crown all the way over to the east and so let's follow the wagon again all the way over to the east climb up the cliff pick up the crown and then make our way through to the exit and you may find that this kind of waiting around to complete these early levels is necessary and it isn't really frustrating when the player wants to get on the move because the music and the atmosphere is quite relaxed at this stage even though the randomness and the respawning enemies and these cliffs you can see are rather annoying to say the least. Thank you. 
to get through every level, what the player must do is to memorise where the exit item is and go straight for it and then memorise where the exit door is. In this case, it's in the cave. And yes, the cave is necessary to go through on every single level. So the levels in Meander comprise of an outdoor stage and then an indoor stage and then sometimes returning to the outdoor again. And sometimes the stages have many caves in them and sometimes not. But you can see this is not Tomb Raider, all we have to do is to find the exit and we don't have to do much shooting along the way as long as we avoid all those respawning enemies. But in another part of the cave we find another section where we can find some more items to dodge, in this case very heavy weights, and some items falling yet again from a mysterious opening in the trap door above our heads, and again we'll have to avoid everything if we want to survive. It's not a very difficult combat game, and yes it does give us some extra energy periodically, but it really is a struggle sometimes to just try to find that exit when it could be anywhere on a particular level. I think it's great that the game gives us clues like go east and go west and collect the spider's egg. Of course, spiders live in caves. And so what we're going to have to do is to traverse another level. And you can see a very well animated dog waiting to gobble us up. And we now have 1400 coins in the bank. Well, we're not going to get to another shop pretty rapidly, but what we are going to see is some respawning enemies and another level which looks pretty similar to the last one. So many platformers, this game depends on the player having explored the level previously and then they can simply march straight through it. And if you don't explore these levels, you could be wandering around for quite some time trying to figure out where you are supposed to be going. And I do know this level a little bit, but not obviously enough. You can see that if we fall down a gap or a crack in the landscape, we'll fall into daggers and extra things which will kill us, so obviously we do not want to jump into spiky areas just willy nilly in case that we die. Like modern adventure games, we have a certain amount of time to collect the daggers before they float away, and because they floated away it means that we no longer have that item, which is fantastic, it means that we'll have to buy that all over again in the shop. But it gives us some extra lives, so if the player progresses and gets that armour and gets those lives, then they could be on 7 or 8 lives by now, and that means that they can really take it easy and take their time adventuring around all these levels. But let's just progress because there are quite some levels to go through and this was recorded during the Lemon Amiga competition and this was an exploratory run of the game. But you can see spiders reminding us of a certain Lionheart game and I can't help feeling that Lionheart was absolutely definitely inspired by Leander.
This game was created by John Burton and Andrew Ingram and they got together in 1989 after they bumped into each other in a computer shop in the UK town of Southport and their first game they worked on together was Airborne Ranger which they sold to Microprose in 1989 and then their first game working together under the banner of Traveller's Tales was this game and Traveller's Tales was founded in 1989 by John and Andrew in an office in Southport and that was just a temporary accommodation just to get this game published and the designers in this case was Andrew Ingram who also did the graphics and a certain Graham Watkinson, Joanne Lynch and Simon James. Code was created by John Burton, who was the company director of Traveller's Tales, and he went on to Pugsy just after this in 1993, and then they got the license to Bram Stoker's Dracula in 1993. Graphics for Leander were created by Andrew Ingram and he also worked of course on Airborne Ranger and also created the graphics for Strider and Strider 2 conversions on the Amiga. And lastly the music for Leander was created by Matthew Simmons otherwise known as Format and Matthew Simmons has a long long history on the Amiga. You can see all we have to do on this particular try is to find the exit and if we fall down the wrong thing by mistake we'll have to do a lot of backtracking and hence the fast forwarding of this video. But it's certainly down this corridor and if we take our time and don't lose any energy needlessly then we'll find the exit and then we'll find the exit to the level further over to the west. And so it's those game mechanics which make up every single level and the levels don't really get much harder, it's just that they get more complex as the game goes on. That's the third level completed and it may surprise you to learn that with seven levels per world and three worlds in the game that means that there are at least 21 levels in Leander and it will take you at least two hours, maybe an hour and a half speed running through this game to get through all 21 levels presuming that you know exactly what you're doing on each one and you don't get yourself killed. You can see every level introduces us to some new enemies and some new effects and that is absolutely brilliant and the scrolling despite this rip is very smooth and the sky backgrounds are brilliant but you can see one enemy in this game can wipe out our energy and what I really should be doing is ignoring the self completely and simply march through off the edge of that platform but if you take on the enemies you can see we've got five lives at the moment that can all change to disaster
Alexander arrived on three discs, which is amazing for 21 levels, and it was also ported to the Sega Mega Drive console, and that was under a different name, The Legend of Galahad, and Galahad is certainly a British name, even though this was based on Greek mythology, you can see Greek guards walking around, and we have a Greek feather in our hair, and this is definitely a Greek game, because we are wearing shorts, and if this was a British game, then the lead character would not be wearing shorts, absolutely not, in the British climate. But you can see that some effort has gone into changing the levels subtly, so that we feel like that we're moving through a different area, and the hardness of the game doesn't really change, it's just that the puzzles involved of trying to get to one place or another sometimes are defeated by those respawning enemies. After the Southworth based Traveller's Tales sold this to Liverpool based Cygnosis, they then converted this to the Meg Drive in 1992, and after the success of Bram Stoker's Dracula, they gained the license to Disney, and they made a number of Disney themed games, and then they also got the Lego license and the Narnia license as well, and so Traveller's Tales are still very much in the business, still managed by the same guys, and still producing games for the latest machines. With the revenue that they got from Bram Stoker's Dracula, they moved into an office above a pet shop in Southport, and then, having moved on to the big leagues with the Disney and Lego series, they moved into an office in Nutsford in Cheshire. On the Amiga, you can see that we found another tricky area, and I'm going to speed this up just a little bit just to get us through this, because, of course, respawning enemies in tricky areas is pretty difficult, but you can see that we've managed to pick up the end of level token. That was a crossbow in this case, and now we can simply walk straight to the exit without losing any more of those lives. We have one life remaining, and that's not particularly good on level 4, when we really need to get through 21 levels. You can see our lion-hearted Lion Man Ironclad Iron Man is still moving through the level, and it's thanks to the great jumping mechanics, which means the jumping is a breeze, and as long as you get rid of those short-range attack weapons and get something of a range, it means that these enemies aren't too hard to defeat. And you can see with zero lives remaining, that's generally a good job because we won't find too many extras and we'll probably only find one extra life on every given level. But let's just not waste any more time, we can actually buy lives in the shop and so that's another option that we can do if we can find the shop in this game. love to see a shop and it's great to pick up those weapons and it seems that we have lost the other weapon ages and ages ago so it will be really good to upgrade. You can see a forest blade is available and a tempest blade which is incredible and of course the lion blade for our lion man 
and that requires 3,000 credits in the bank and it doesn't tell us either so if you want to find out your credits you'll have to exit the shop and walk back in there all over again but you can see that we've spent all our cash so all we can do is to try to find the exit and we've bought the black armor which at least gives us six hit points and all we need to do is to remember where to go and after quite a few levels they look quite samey and on world one all of the levels look quite samey indeed but let's move on that's number 1.4 completed and now we get to move on to number five where we can find lethal boats and lethal water and what we have to do of course is to avoid falling into the water at this stage because that's not very good and no let's avoid holding down the fire button because that's a suicide weapon and that will kill us and there is absolutely nothing we can do at this stage you can see the brickwork is fantastic and of course the animation on all the characters is up there with all the best Signosis games and even though this wasn't coded for Signosis specifically I don't think the graphics elements are absolutely there and so this game has its pros and cons and if you are a die hard platform fan then surely you'll find something in this to enjoy and it's great that we don't simply die from a long drop Leander was featured in most magazines and you can see it made it onto the cover of this one which I think may be a Polish magazine but that wasn't included in the ratings so let's just move on to those scores Amiga Joker gave Leander the lowest score with 74% Amiga Format gave it 78 the current Lemon score is debatably 81% Amiga Power awarded this 83%, Steve Amiga gave this 85%, Amiga Computing gave Leander 86%, Daytona Magazine gave it 87%, Zero awarded it 88%, Amiga Action gave Leander 91%, The One gave it 93%, Generation 4 gave it 95%, and Joystick Magazine also awarded Leander 95% which awards this the average score of 8.5 out of 10. In this case, the exit item is hidden inside this guy. It's a ring. And so all we have to do is to exit this instant pit of disaster. And in this case, it doesn't have respawning enemies, but it does require some timing. And timing in this case is pretty difficult and can be frustrating. So let's fast forward through all of my raw attempts to try and get out of this pit. And I think that apart from these mechanics, it really is a good game and it's not as bad or as frustrating with the puzzles as Shadow of the Beast and this gets everything right which Shadow of the Beast got wrong and they improved all of that in Shadow of the Beast 2 of course but still this has more playability it's just that there is a lot of padding around these huge levels I think there is a lot on offer in Leander and you'll certainly get your money's worth for this game if you like extensive platformers and I like the graphics and the smoothness and the quality of the gameplay it's just that the game is too vast for my mere skills and I'm already feeling drained getting this far in the game this is only level 5 and you can see some tremendous effects and I like the dogs running and things like that but for my money it's a difficult game and although you can get 2 million points if you complete it this is as far as I've ever got with the game and running away from a dog when I had the shield power means unfortunately it's game over and that means that we get to enter our name on that high score table
even though I absolutely adore this music with a passion, we're still going to use the long play footage available on YouTube to watch the rest of that level just to see how far we were away from that exit. And yes, if we walk to the other side of town and climb up a sheer wall on top of these battlements is actually the exit, and that's only the exit to level 1.5, don't forget, we've still got a long way to go. So let's just fast forward through this long play and check out some more of the levels. And on the very next one, it means that we have to jump over flower sacks to get over very many gaps. And dodging flower sacks is a little bit different in a platformer. And you can see that some effects have been used later on. And finally, we move on through the levels. We can see that we are finally through onto the final level of World 1. And when we've completed World 1, it will say congratulations, you have completed the first part of your quest and here is the password to World 2. And as a special bonus, we are given a different landscape in World 2 and some more music and a different female guiding deity as well. If World 2 reminds you of another game, yes, it reminds me of Gods, another Greek mythological game, and they probably had inspiration from the Bitmap Brothers Gods when they were creating these levels, but most of the architecture you can see is of course Greek, and some ancient Greek mythology has been used to great effect. And you can see some extra traps on the floor, and sometimes it's a case of jumping and leaping of faith, and sometimes it's a bit different to the normal platforming experience. But you can see, unless you have memorized these things to perfection, you will die, and there are no two ways around it. I feel it's a shame that most players will never ever get to see these later levels and all these amazing effects on offer. And yes, that was the evil Thanatos himself, and you're supposed to use the bombs to get rid of him, and it's only the bombs that can get rid of that evil skull that appears in spirit form. And it's those tricks that you can only learn from the manual if you've read the manual in the first place. But just like so many of the games that we've seen, including Soccer Kid, the later levels are better and they are more interesting than the earlier ones, and it also has some great music as well, and it's just unfortunate that the average player will never get to see this side of the game having died mercilessly, or having spent six months memorising all the levels so they don't inadvertently drop into a pit of death. And it's those mechanics which make or break the game, and as I say, it's a lot easier and it's a lot smoother than the first two Shadow of the Beast games, and for my money it has even better graphics. At the end of World 2, we will also congratulate ourselves on making it that far, and we'll also gain another deity, and another landscape, and some more music as well.
third world isn't really much different from the first world in terms of hardness and as long as you have the power sword it means that you can chop straight through those enemies and they don't take a million hits like some platformers and yes the usual dodging water trick has to be learnt when the water dips down and even a no swimming sign gives us a little bit of humour in the game and these dragons don't even fire fireballs which is a bit different for a dragon and they just simply follow us around and so it tends to take it easy on the player as they're going through the levels but it's still tremendously hard if you don't know what to do and there isn't a cat in hell's chance that I'll ever get this far in this game. very end of the game you will find a number of huge bosses and they are very well animated and they certainly did not need to put so many huge bosses in the game right at the end and again it's great that we can simply defeat those and not have a huge headache and this is one of my favourite bosses it's an elf with a huge claw and all we have to do is to stand back and wait for that boss to disappear and that's all we need to do to get rid of some of these and so it's not as hard as putty squad and some of the games we've seen already and you can see some tremendous skeletons that remind us of skeletor and the enemies in this game aren't too tremendously difficult at this stage they don't even fire any projectiles towards us at any stage Finally we get all the way through the game and we find the very last level of the game where all we have to do is to defeat the final boss and then touch the princess waiting for us to be rescued and that's all you have to do it's not particularly hard and it's not even as hard as Arabian Nights which is a real shock but he will take some of your energy and then after that you will be given the end of game animation sequence. Our Greek story is complete, it even tells us that Leander is Greek for Lion Man and to watch out for Leander 2, Tigerlander, Tiger Man in the next part. And so thank you once again for viewing another Lemon Amiga play guide and review and I hope to see you again in another play guide at some point sometime soon. Thank you. <laughs>